And the winner of the Irish American Centres and Festival Award 2018 goes to Minnesota's Celtic Junction Health Centre and Owen McKiernan Lake. This is your Irish Diary. You are looking at one of the oldest associations with mankind, something that goes back into the dim, dim past. It's interesting, isn't it, that something as simple as this, a piece of reed made of straw, should have such an ancient history in man's experience. Thank you all, and welcome back to our fifth annual fundraiser. Uh, if you've been with us for the last hour, thanks for sticking with us. This is our virtual edition of our fundraiser. We obviously can't have you all here in person, but I suppose we're probably reaching a bigger audience now than we typically would. Um, my name is Cormac O'Shea, and I'm the board chair. My name is Natalie Nugent O'Shea. I'm the executive director. We are your hosts for this afternoon and into the evening. Um, we've never done a virtual fundraiser before, even though this is our fifth annual. Uh, this year we got carried away trying to figure out what we were going to do and ended up uh, deciding on a six-hour streamathon. You are now on hour two. Yeah, <laughs> getting carried away with projects is one of our specialties. Never. Natalie, we would never do that. As this whole institution uh, <laughs> attests for. But uh, if you're with us and, and if you're paying attention to what we're trying to do today, you'll see that we're we have a huge mountain to climb. We are endeavoring to raise $100,000 in matching challenge donation. So we have a donor who is willing to donate to uh, Celtic Junction Arts Centre, but the condition is that we would have a matching dollar for dollar don donation over this coming year. So if you can find it in yourself to support us, that would be fantastic. Ways to donate are through PayPal particularly. So there's a PayPal link, I believe it might be on your screen. Otherwise, it's paypal.me slash Celtic Junction. And there's a QR code on your screen as well. So you can just put your mobile phone. If, well, the Apple phones work. I think you, you might need to get a little more high tech with some of the other ones. And you can also go to our donate, our donate button on the website or just send a check. Uh, we do old school as well. Um, now, before we move any further, I'm going to explain the structure of our day. Uh, Celtic Junction Arts Center runs four programs, education, library, concerts, and outreach. So we're going to focus in depth on one every hour. So right now, we're going to move into our library section. But first, I want to remind everybody, if you donate $50 or more, you're automatically entered to win a Celtic Junction Arts Center thank you gift pack. I'll show you it, uh, that in the ne next segment. It's a pin, a patch, a tote, and one special prize on the hour. Uh, this time, I believe the special gift that is on offer is Martine de Cogan's 
from Cork with Love DVD and a special recording of the Brian Baru pipe band. How could you not want that? Um, so now we are going to be focusing on the Owen McKiernan Library, discussing archives, uh, hearing some music with Jim Tarbox, our library uh, committee member and library director, Mr. Brian Miller. Well, hi, everybody. I'm Jim Tarbox, a member of the board of directors here at Celtic Junction Arts Center, and I'm also the drum major of St. Paul's Brian Baru Irish Pipe Band. So you might recognize me there as the guy with the big hat and the big stick. Uh, we're here, and we're happy to have you join us at uh, Celtic Junction's fall fundraiser. Hope you're able to make a contribution of some kind. You know, the junction provides both uh, educational opportunities and entertainment. And a lot of dances and music things going on here. We've hosted both national and local groups. And those presentations are available only because of your kind generosity. And uh, that's the point of our fundraiser here. I'm here today with Brian Miller, well-known member of the local Irish music community. who wears a number of hats here at uh, the junction. Perhaps most importantly, as director of the Owen McKiernan Library and Reading Room. So, Brian, welcome. Tell us a little bit about how uh, you came to be the director, and tell us a bit about the library, too. Thanks, Jim. Um, so, Owen McKiernan was, uh, he worked at St. Thomas, came here uh, in the early 60s, and was here for really most of his life, and uh, he was a huge uh figure in Irish studies and in Irish America and had many connections directly to Ireland. And so um, he's really, a, you know, he's a big name uh, for, for people that are interested in Irish culture and Irish music and Irish literature and poetry. Um, and he lived right here in the Twin Cities. So he kept his own library. He also distributed books around the United States and, and traveled all around the world uh, promoting this idea of sort of the real Ireland, you know, Ireland that was more than just a green beer on St. Patrick's Day. So when he passed away in the early 2000s, uh, he left this huge library to his family. Some of them were books that he was maybe writing a review of or distributing through his, uh, through Irish Books and Media, um, his book distribution company, or they were just books that he had and he used uh, in his teaching. But uh, they were looking for a place for the books to go, and um, they were offered to uh, Cormac and Natalie before there was a Celtic Junction Arts Center, and they said yes. And I had happened to just finish getting my library, uh, my Master's of Library and in Information Studies degree, and I was looking to work. Uh, you know, I had this, I guess, pipe dream that I would do something that had to do with the music that I love, with Irish music. And they said, hey, <laughs> you can do that right here, right down the street from your house. So, um, so we really, when the nonprofit was formed um, in the fall of 2016, we had our first fundraiser. And it was uh, really to raise money to, to build this room, so to put in the, the bookshelves. And we, and we had Owen's books all in boxes. And, uh, I set to work with a group of volunteers cataloging um, kind of what ended up being two or 3,000 books somewhere in there. It was, and, uh, and then we've grown from there. Tell us a bit about how you think the library affects the community. What kind of impact does it have? Well, we are still a fledgling library in terms of our actual physical collection. So um, I think the, the real potential of this actual, this room and of the books in the room and the CDs and some of those physical resources is still, is still maybe in the future, especially right now <laughs> when everything's locked down and nobody's coming in here. Um, but, uh, but the room itself has had a big impact on, on this building and the Celtic Junction community because it's a, it's a quiet place. You can come, you can do homework. It's the home of the, our Celtic, our, our Irish college. Uh, class series happens in here and it's just a it's the most beautiful space in the building it's been getting used a lot for that and we have um, a small group of, of researchers that have come in and actually done quite a bit of research in here so one thing that we're doing with the physical collection is trying to find find our niche right because St. Thomas is down the road and they have a 
Irish Studies collection of books. Um, so some of these resources that we have are also available there, but we're trying to be a library for the community. And a university library can feel sort of intimidating or off limits maybe to a community, whereas I want this library to be the community's library. You know, the, the, the library you'd go to if you wanted to like look, look up a new song that you wanted to learn, or if you've always meant to read James Joyce, but you never got around to it. <laughs> um, this is a place where you could go and explore these, these kind of things and enrich your experience of Irish, Irish culture. So when you are open, the library is open to the public, though, is that right? It is, yeah. <clears throat> we, we have relatively limited hours just because at the moment, um, this is a shared space with the Irish College. So the, and then um, the building is also quite quiet during the day, and we just we haven't had the budget to have like the, the building open all the time, right? So it's open in the evening, and then the classes come. So we have, we're open for two hours typically, 4.30 to 6.30, or 4 to 6. And then uh, it um, turns over to the Irish College after that. So part of what this whole fundraiser about is about is having a new dedicated space for those classes so the library actually can have a little bit more open hours uh, in the evening and be just specifically um, available as a resource and not just as a beautiful space. Hi, my name is Ethna McKiernan, and I'm here to tell you how wonderful the Owen McKiernan Library is at the Celtic Junction. From history, to literature, to genealogy, to dictionaries of the Irish language, the Valdraha, O'Donnell, the Owen McKiernan Library at the Celtic Junction has something for every Irish enthusiast. It's a truly beautiful place with several fine wooden study tables in the center, each lit by a classic green banker's lamp, surrounded by thousands of painstakingly cataloged books on elegant cherry shelving. Books abound here, and you may find yourself one afternoon gathered for a small class on poetry, or just whiling away a rainy day with a friend as you both work on genealogical research. I say these things not because the library was named after my scholar father, Owen McKiernan, but because the library is truly a magical place. Please help us further the work of the Celtic Junction. Thank you. Diodit, is Mishakat Daly, Falchigal Lowerlin, Owen McKiernan. Hello, I'm Kate Daly. Welcome to the Owen McKiernan Library. I started as a volunteer cataloging new acquisitions for the library several years ago. I enjoyed the process of learning about Ireland through the titles and subject matter of these books. So I miss your address and welcome to Ireland. My knowledge was more tourist and travel oriented, somewhat filled with stereotypes. Over time, I enrolled in classes offered by the Irish College of Minnesota located in the Celtic Junction Art Center held in the library. These classes included Irish language, poetry, literature, oral traditions, and genealogy. I sought out books in the library with similar subjects, academic as well as personal. For me, with a background in anthropology, I was interested in Irish culture and the arts, traditional and contemporary dress and its reflection of Irish culture. And though I'm still interested in travel and tourism in Ireland, my understanding of Irish history, literature, language, politics, geography, and culture has broadened. And isn't that the purpose of a library? To increase an interest, understanding, and appreciation in a community? In the interim, the library has been my home away from home. I've read to preschoolers, suggested resources to students researching a topic, provided tours for individuals and groups, discussed Irish subjects with adults, and it's me who's been enriched by these interactions. I hope you'll join us soon. Gramaga, thank you.
dear thoughts are in my mind and my soul soars enchanted as I hear the sweet lark sing A tender beaming smile to my hope has been granted, and tomorrow she shall hear all my fond heart would say. I shall tell her all. This that brings my soul all that joy is elation as I hear the sweet lark sing in the clear air of the day. What but love sets the heart aglow With a matchless exaltation Filled with song like the meadow fair Neath the dawning sun's gracious ray my words be meek and plain, they're imbued with sincere intention. May they light upon my true love's ear, like the songbird's hymn to Where we've really, uh, I think, actually served the community so far is through our local history work. So we've, I'm really interested in archiving as well as having physical books. So we've done an oral history project and we've collected photos from the community documenting Irish arts in the Twin Cities. And I think that's really where we've had the biggest impact in our first five years is uh, this kind of really uh, meaningful outreach to the community and, and celebrating the history of the community. Now, what we've done just from the ground up was we got another grant from the Minnesota Historical Society to do an oral history project where Dahi Sproul, the incredible local musician from, uh, from Derry, went around town and interviewed some of the people that were involved in the revival here in the, in the late 70s. And that, um, that is a real jewel, I think, in our archival collection. So we have the audio and transcripts, and then a lot of photos that people brought in around that. And that was the seed then for adding more photos. We've done a lot of collecting of photos from, from the dance community here, the early uh, 80s, late 70s dance community in the Twin Cities, as well as um, the history of the Irish Fair, going back to the first fair in 1980. And um, that's, I just, I'm really passionate about that stuff. And it, it, it really, it's easier than a physical book to make a direct connection to someone if you find a photo of somebody, somebody that re they remember or that's important to them. And I really, lo I love those connections. My 
name is Dahi Sproul and uh, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the oral history project that was done at, for the um, Ormna Kiernan Library uh, with a grant from the Minnesota Historical Society. And uh, the way I would uh, look at the project is that for uh, many years, even in Ireland, back in Ireland, I was thinking that there hadn't been enough work done uh, giving musicians and dancers and people involved in traditional culture enough opportunity to talk uh, comfortably and at length about their lives uh, and their art forms. And in the case of when I used to think of it in Ireland, of course, part of the issue was that uh, elders were not interviewed um, until it was too late. They were gone and we'd lost all that history. So anyhow, to move along to uh, my time in Minnesota, um, when I first came here uh, 40 years ago, or more, a bit more 40 years ago, um, for a visit the first time to play music, uh, there was already a vibrant scene here in the Twin Cities, people uh, playing Irish traditional music at a great level and also a very active dance scene. Uh, it was very impressive and wonderful and that had a lot to do with me settling happily in the Twin Cities. And uh, so the idea in recent years then was, well, maybe we should um, give the people who were involved, the crucial people, the people who were involved in the early period, an opportunity to tell their stories. And this was something Brian Miller um, was also very interested in. And uh, so we talked about it for a while and uh, eventually uh, he applied for a grant and we got going. And we assembled a list of uh, 13 or 14, 12, 13 people who we knew uh, were important to the history of uh, traditional music and dance in the Twin Cities. And uh, we got a nice recorder and a mic and we assembled our list and every now and again, uh, the both of us, or just me and myself, would get together in a comfortable setting uh, and talk at length. Often the conversations were two or three hours. And um, we the story, as far as our narrators are concerned, um, the, the one with the earliest information, of course, was Martin McHugh, who is our elder statesman and our inspiration. Um, here in the Twin Cities for great traditional music. Martin came here in the 50s and uh, from Ireland and he's a great, wonderful accordion player. And then he, and he hung out with the people who had come out before him playing Irish music and uh, then he kept the flag flying and he inspired uh, next generations uh, who came along. And so that was really that was the story that we were, we were um, assembling, as it were, through all these different um, conversations, and it really was uh, it really was wonderful. And uh, for me, uh, being involved with it, I had a tremendous gift to get to uh, listen to everybody's story. Martin McHugh, of course, was fantastic. Um, uh, he he almost told um, a minute by minute. A story of his arrival in the Twin Cities and what happened uh, for the first few days were brought to life um, in great detail and uh, then uh, the people who came after them, the Tom Dayhill uh, had wonderful stories and uh, then the Northern Star Katie Band, Plowing the Stars people and uh, the dancers Jenny Bach and uh, Sheila Jordan told uh, some of the dance, the story of dance in the Twin Cities and uh, I um, did the interviews and then I, I transcribed them. And uh, that added an extra dimension to the whole business because I appreciated even more uh, how well they told their stories and how fascinating the whole business was. And uh, to mention Martin again, uh, it, was like, uh, it was like a very fine piece of writing when you just transcribed what he had said. So uh, all this is available, all these uh, people's stories are available um, online 
through the Celtic Junction and Owen McKiernan Library and uh, it's well worth checking out. Another part of it that ended up happening was that uh, we got photos, people contributed photos um, of the, those early years, the from the 50s to the nine, about 90 was the, the theoretical timeline. And of course, everybody was digging out their old photos and it was just, that was fantastic. And Brian Miller um, assembled them and went through them. And uh, we had an exhibition uh, at the junction and then uh, so the, the photos were displayed and uh, uh, then we had a kind of conversation slash concert with some of the people who had been participating but it was wonderful that evening to uh, before the, the concert happened or before whatever that was a concert a talk show happened uh, people were coming in and uh, we had uh, plenty of time for people to walk around and look at the photos and there were people who had never who didn't know this history at all but then it was just delightful to see people who had been involved in the history going along and seeing all these old photos of them 30 and 40 years ago and reminding them of uh, wonderful times but um you know it isn't the, the whole point of it is that for me anyway it's not a celebration just a celebration of the past it's a celebration of the fact that we have this continuity, that the th things that were happening there then were uh, uh, enriching a soil that is still very, very rich. And uh, we've, we're so delighted to have all these great um, musicians uh, of all ages and dancers, wonderful dance scene. And uh, so uh, if you have never gone and checked out the Oral History Project online, uh, I'd strongly recommend it. So those are just a few words to introduce you to the whole thing and I hope you check it out and enjoy it. All the best. History project that Dahi was just talking about is one of the projects I'm most proud of from the last five years at the McKiernan Library and it was also a ton of fun um, just getting out in the community talking to musicians and singers and for me it's just fun to understand local history more deeply um, and I learned so much uh, through the stories that people told uh, during that project I'm so interested anyway in in the history of Irish music in Minnesota and I've done a bunch of research outside of my time here at the library into singing that went on up north in the logging camps. I sing a song called The Lady Elgin and it's a fascinating song about a Great Lakes shipwreck on Lake Michigan. And I've, I've been telling the story behind the song for years but I just pulled a couple books off the shelf here from the library today and I, and I learned more. So we have a, a beautiful book here, um, the field journals of a folklorist named Ivan Walton that spent a bunch of time on Beaver Island, where there's this kind of amazing uh, Irish community in the northern waters of Lake Michigan. And one of the singers there, uh, Dominic Gallagher, told him that uh, the ship that crashed into the Lady Elgin was haunted and that he had sailed on on the Great Lakes on this ghost ship. And every time it went out, somebody would perish. Um, we have another book uh, called The History of the Irish in Wisconsin in the 19th Century. Uh, a few pages in there about the Lady Elgin let you go a little bit deeper into sort of the messy politics in Milwaukee that were behind the trip to begin with. So um, right there, even, even for me, having sung that song for years, uh, there's so much here in the library that, that allows me to go deeper into it and understand more of the history. A one, two, three, one. <laughs>
suffered by those five hundred lives Lost in the Lady Elgin, sleeping to wake on war Numbering in death five hundred that failed to reach the shore They strode a harbor, joyfully rang the bell. Little they thought their mornings would feel so sad now. Lost on the lady Elgin, sleeping to wake no more. Numbering in death, five hundred that failed to reach the shore. Lost on the lady Elgin. I'm Julia Rogers. I'm the president of the Irish Music and Dance Association. Um, and we are a nonprofit focused on promoting and celebrating Irish cultural traditions. Um, we have a couple of events throughout the year. For our IMDA Honors event 2019, we were able to partner with the McCreden Library to bring photos to our event. It was really wonderful to have this rich history captured. Um, and the photos were throughout the room. People got to stop and talk about events they were at or just really reminisce um, about wonderful history and the culture that we're here, um, which was just a really great layer to add to an already great event. Hello everyone, my name is Mary McNee, and I was a member of the Mooncoin Keeley Dancers for about 10 years. And in 1980, we went to Ireland to collect set dances. It was one night in Ennis while we were uh, learning the floor set that I got really dizzy, so I stepped out of the group and went to lean against uh, a wall to recover. And as I was watching, the dancers that were, were so wholeheartedly engaged with each other. I realized that bringing the two groups together, we really belong to something way bigger than all of us. So then years later, we heard that when uh, there was greater interest in the Clare set because those, those Yanks from Minnesota had traveled so far to learn the dance. Now today, the Celtic Network of Connection continues its really vibrant life at the Celtic Junction and the Owen McCurian Library uh, in Twin Peaks Cities. For example, there was a celebratory evening for the uh, Oral History Project that included an exhibition of archival photos from the Owen McCurian Library. And that evening there was a feeling of such warmth and appreciation for our shared history that just permeated the room as we revisited those really exuberant times uh, when we forged so much friendship through the Irish Music and Dance. When the Irish Music and Dance Association invited me to be part of their honors program, my first thought was, what are they thinking? I haven't danced in 30 years. But again, with my co-honorees, Jenny Bach and Sheila Jordan, we had a really another jolly evening uh, with additional photos from the library growing collection. 
the Celtic Junction and the Owen McKiernan Library are really phenomenal resources for Irish music, dance, and language, and, and local Irish history, and cities like Chester. So with both financial and volunteer support, may they live long and always prosper. Yes, yes. Live long, live long and prosper. prosper. We, we shall. shall. Oh, that Mary, Mary McKee Fair. Fair. A long, a long time time dancer, dancer and dance teacher with Boone 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 Bo from, from the Gal, Gal, uh, Jenny, Jenny, Mary, Mary, and, Mary, and, we, and we have a beautiful, beautiful action that we set up, set up in the main, in the main hall, hall, area, area hall. Attraction, all on the walls. And it really, it's just one of the ways that we try to use our local history archive to connect with the broader community and help add this historical angle to local Irish arts events. And once again, I am Brian Miller, the library director, and um, I'm sitting here today uh, with library volunteer and Celtic Junction Arts Center board member, Jim Tarbox. And why are we sitting here only to ask for your support to support this meaningful work that the Owen McKiernan Library is doing. Uh, the Celtic Junction Arts Center, of course, our parent organization is the, the host of this fundraiser and we're celebrating all the different programs the Celtic Junction Arts Center does. This is library hour. Now it's time to, to uh, Show your support specifically for the McKiernan Library by giving this hour. We're asking for donations of any amount, whatever works for you, $10, $50, but whatever works. Well, that's right, Brian. We are doing our best to make your donations easy to make here. If you're watching us on Facebook or YouTube, you can see that there's a QR code up in the corner there. If you hold your phone up to that, uh, that'll take you right to our PayPal site, and you can make a donation very simply there. And if you make a donation there of $50 or more, you'll be eligible for a uh, special gift that we're giving away at the top of the hour here, 4 o'clock. And, uh, of course, we do take paper checks, too. You can find the address to the Celtic Junction on our website at CelticJunction.org. I have to tell you that uh, I've been getting the business about these socks I'm wearing today, but I promise <laughs> not a single penny of your donation will go to buying me new socks, despite Cormac's fervent wish and I wore something different. So please, <laughs> dig deep if you can. We know times are tough, but we would really appreciate any donation of any size that you can give us. <laughs> oh, Jim, I love your socks. The <laughs> collection at the McKiernan Library includes these wonderful one-of-a-kind uh, items like the oral histories uh, Dahi Sproul was talking about and the photos that were part of these exhibitions that we've put together. We also have books and CDs. And one of the things that your money goes to is to expand, expand these, these collections so that we can do these fun and valuable uh, exhibitions. Uh, they fund our photo mounting supplies, our equipment we use to record things like oral histories, photo equipment. Uh, your gift also increases our book buying budget so we can buy books specifically aimed at the classes at the Celtic College or at our Irish music and dance community. Those are the two communities we really wanna serve here at the library. We, uh, Jim mentioned gifts we're giving away at the end of the hour. Um, it's a gift pack. It's a kind of an assortment of things, I believe. But uh, we have a book here from our collection, a duplicate book, kind of a hard to find book about the Irish harp and the history of the Irish harp. Um, I'm going to just, this is spur of the moment and wild. I'm going to throw in the Lost 40 CD that has that beautiful uh, Lady Elgin song on it there. Um, how can they give, Jim? You, what's can the go to the, you can go to the website. <laughs> Look for that Q card, Q card. QR code up in the corner there. Hold your phone up to that, and it'll do all the heavy lifting for you. And, of course, we are accepting any donations of any size. We really appreciate your help. And now we're going to turn back to that conversation Jim and I had a week ago, uh, more about what the McKiernan Library plans for the future. So you'd mentioned the music and the archival uh, part of the library. Tell us a little bit more about the collection. Yeah, the archival collection... Um, that just basically started from scratch. There were 
a few archival materials that came with the big um, pile of boxes that came from the McKiernan family. And we're actually just kind of getting to those now, and they're, they're quite exciting. Um, so one, one piece that came from the McKiernans were the master tapes for Owen's uh, television programs that he produced in the early 60s uh, when he first had arrived in Minnesota. So he had two shows that ran on public television. They were recorded uh, just right up on, I think right up on Como Avenue at the, at the early public TV studio there. And um, the first was called uh, Ireland Revisited and the second was called Irish Diary. And I think they were you know, something around 50 episodes between the two shows. But they were really revolutionary, again, for kind of promoting this more multidimensional vision of Ireland and modern Ireland and Irish history that, that kind of maybe broke Americans out of their Danny Boy comfort zone. <laughs> so, um, so we have those, those master tapes, and we have actually just got word this week that, that they're uh, completed being digitized. So we wrote a grant to the... Minnesota Historical Society to get money to digitize them and preserve them, and we've we've succeeded with that. How would you like to see the library continue to grow? Well, I would love us uh, with with the space and with the physical uh, collection to really define our our um, our collection areas. So the the two that are sort of emerging um, are Irish music, which wouldn't be a focus for for the St. Thomas collection nor the Minnesota Historical Society. That's really something that I think could be unique to us here in Minnesota in this room. And it, it serves, obviously, the, the community that's in the building. It's also, of course, my own passion, so I'm biased. Um, and then the other, the other obvious collection area is Irish language. So Owen McKiernan was way ahead of his time, especially as somebody born in America, in uh, recognizing the importance of uh, preserving, reviving, celebrating uh, the, the Irish language. And uh, he really committed much of his life to that. So he, his collection reflects that, and there were all these really actually quite rare Irish language books in his collection. And then as it's worked out, um, we have this incredible um, teacher from Connemara, Lavinia Finnerty, that teaches for the Irish College. And uh, so we have this strength in this Irish language area, which really is a niche and kind of unusual. So we've been collecting quite a few Irish language books and they're rare and they're they're hard to come by and it, it's they're definitely off the off the beaten path but um we have a, a great community of irish language learners here in the twin cities and we're trying to support those two areas so i'd love to see those two areas grow um i'd love us to have more uh audio we have already a, a great like really kind of uniquely wonderful collection of irish traditional music uh recorded music we have a partnership now with gail lynn records one of the great irish music records uh, record labels in ireland um, and also a huge promoter of irish language and they sent us um, this you know you were involved with cataloging it but a, a big uh, swath of their back catalog i think we have maybe like 70 percent of the full uh, gail lynn catalog now which is amazing so you'd mentioned digitizing uh owen mckiernan's video stuff which makes me think of digitization in general what are the prospects of uh, of the library going online? Is that a pie in the sky, or is that something you hope? Oh to well, we're all, yeah, we're already online. I mean, we're just not. I mean, the way that that works is it really separates the physical collection from your archival collection, right? Because we're not going to go through and digitize all these books, you know. In in all likelihood, Google has already done that, right. and there are. We'll let them have that legal fight, <laughs> but we are we are putting more stuff online on on our website, which is part of the Celtic Junction uh, website. If you go there, and there's our logo is is the red phoenix, the the bird, and click on the bird and go to the go to the library part of the site, and we have our oral history project online. We have an archive of concert recordings from the Traditional Singers Club. We have. Uh, photo archive of the community. We have all the past posters and programs from the Irish Fair. Those are all, all digitized, all online and searchable, um, as well as a fascinating collection of a family of Irish American musicians that grew up on Cedar Lake, south of the Twin Cities, and then lived over by St. Mark's, the Doherty family. Oh, we just put that up recently. And there are uh, these home recordings from the 50s of them playing Irish traditional music and Scandinavian waltzes in their living room. 
at home. Um, so, yeah, so we've been putting quite a bit of stuff on, online. It's just, I think, um, maybe in the Google age, there, there's an assumption that maybe everything goes online, but um, the books are here. <laughs> and the books, uh, you know, like I said, I mean, some of the books are accessible online. Some of them have been digitized, but that's not our project. Uh, our project is, is uh, you know, collecting the physical items so that you can physically come in and look at them. And then separately, we have this archival mission where we're putting things online. And that's, if you go to our website, there's loads there already and hopefully a lot more to come. Well, that's great. Well, you've talked a little bit about the, your hopes to grow the library and expand the collection, both music and uh, digital. Tell us a little bit about uh, how the, our donors' contributions are going to avail that up. The do yeah, so we're, we exist, um, like most libraries, um, completely <laughs> because of, of, of donors and, and, and grant support. There's no, um, there's no charge to come in the door of the library and... Um, really we, we completely rely on donors so we, we've ne we've only recently you know because of generous donations had um a budget to to purchase books so if we want a book like there's there's a there's a symposium happening soon on frederick Douglass, uh incredible historical figure from america who actually spent time in ireland uh, on his time in ireland and what effect that might have had on on his uh, viewpoint and so we were able, with the, with having a book budget, to buy. Um, you know, there's a nice book that's written about Frederick Douglass's time in Ireland. Um, there's other there are other issues that come up or other topics. Um, I did a class recently through the Center for Irish Music on Chief O'Neill, great uh, song collector or sorry, tune collector, Irish music collector that was also chief of police in Chicago, and the library was able to buy buy a book. You know, so we're able to buy books that support things that are going on in the community. Um, I mean, donations also just fund my position. I'm a, I'm a employed <laughs> to be here, and there's, there's really no like income stream other than, other than the community support that allows that to be so. So I'm just, you know, I'm so thankful that people have stepped up and put up the money to have the library be here. Um, you know, it also buys equipment for us, uh, the scanners that allow us to scan uh, people's photos that they bring in and the computers that we have available during normal times. Um, we try to have a subscription to Ancestry.com, so you, uh, another group that we try to serve are people doing genealogy. So all these things cost money, um, and uh, support is so welcome and just amazing. It's been amazing so far. Back in 2010, the great character and barroom player and singer Martin de Kogan was living in Rochester, Minnesota, and we were playing together quite a bit, and Martin wanted to make a live album here at the Celtic Junction, which we ended up doing. Uh, as part of that, we were going to do a set of tunes with Nathan Gorley and Nora Rendell playing fiddle and flute, and Martin asked me, what if we found some tunes that all were named after places in Cork? So I got out O'Neill's book, which um, a lot of people would have this at home that play Irish music. We have it here at the library and just went through the table of contents, really, and found um, three reels that all had cork names. Of course, Chief O'Neill that put the book together, uh, chief of police in Chicago around 1900. He was from West Cork. Uh, here's that set of tunes from our concert with Martine that was put out on the album. <laughs>
I really enjoyed that. What do you think, Corma? Uh, it was great to see that young looking Brian Miller in there. <laughs> the library has done such amazing work in the last four years. It's a joy every time um, to hear uh, the updates from Brian to see what's going on. Um, oral history, local history, literature, music. I mean, as you can see, it's all weaving together into this beautiful tapestry and this beautiful um, uh, history. And, and we're telling the story of Minnesota. We're telling the story of the Irish who came here. It's, it stretches beyond generations and it stretches beyond time. It's really beautiful. And it really proves, as I have known all along, of course, that Brian Miller is the perfect person in the perfect job for the perfect time. Um, this was the time that needed him. He stepped in when the Owen McKiernan Library came into existence. Uh, and it is an ideal match. It's the universe conspiring for us, I think, and uh, just recognizing how lucky we are. Definitely. Here, here on the Brian Miller part. And thank you to Brian and Jim of course. for uh, their incredible contribution there. Their naturals, our TV special men. Um, with the voices. With the voices, <laughs> yes, yes. And those socks. You can't beat the socks. Um, so, I mean, I hope this is giving you a little bit of an indication of how strong the library program is. Um, we're just incredibly honored to uh, to have Brian as our leader in that particular area. And he is an incredible uh, group of uh, volunteers and people who are contributing so much. Um, so speaking of contributing, um, we now have another winner to announce. Um, we're, we have this, uh, what is it called? The Junction Thank You Pack. It's got the pin, the patch. <laughs> and the bag. And Leah Ebison, you're our winner this hour. Congratulations, Leah. You also get the special gifts this hour, the Irish Heart Book and the Lost 40 CD special gift from Brian, um, our singing librarian, Brian Miller. Congratulations. Now we'll message you, but stick around. We just got a special announcement. Um, there will be a chance for a $300 gift card for uh, Cara Pubs, Dinner for 10, but we just got a big do uh, donation. Terry and Megan Simons, from San Jose, California, just pledged $10,000. Wow. Um, and it just so happens he works for Google. Google will match it. So that means $20,000. They were inspired by our Irish College of Minnesota, especially by the language. Um, they're great uh, supporters of the language. Uh, and that's one of the things that we do best. And that means a great deal. That will go so many ways. Thank you so much to both Terry and Megan. Um, that puts us a well on our way toward our goal of 100 thousand um, dollars now next we have 12 years of music in these halls we're going to be talking with Cormac about concerts <laughs> 